whoop it. Bitch, I'm outside of some movie. Blue cheese, I swear I'm addicted to blue cheese. I gotta stick to this paper like loose leaf. Bitch, I'm buy my chicken like it's a two piece. You can have your bitch back, she a groupie. She just swallow all my kids in a two seat. Swagged out. Trap house off the 42, I'm blowing her back out. I'm back on my bullshit, spin back with a full clip. They say I'm moving ruthless, and my shooters they shooting. I'm gonna take her they roof, Chris. I get the breeze, then it's adios. If I'm with your trees, then she giving throat. When I see police, then we gang low. That's another piece, that's another zone. Ice in the VVs, now she down to get tree I got all this water on me like Fiji. Bitch, I'm posted up with hats and the sleazies. Smoking the Zaza, it goes straight to the Mata. Then I'm up in the chopper, hitting the cha cha. Open his lata, then he dance in my chata. Open his zaza, it go straight to the mata. And I'm open his chata, hitting the chata. Then I'm open his lata, then he dance in my chata. Whoop there, bitch, I'm outside of some movie. Blue cheese, I swear I'm addicted to blue cheese. I gotta stick to this paper like blue sleep. Bitch, I'm buy my chicken like it's a two piece. You can have your bitch back, she a groupie. She just swallow all my kids in a two seat. Swagged out, familiar, we bringing them gas out. I still got some. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. To the Cruiserweight Classic, our first special event of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Major Pain Wrestling Federation, and we are live from Las Vegas, Nevada, for one hell of an evening. The best of the Cruiserweights. We started this Cruiserweight Classic over five months ago, and now finally we will find out at the end of the night who will be the very first undisputed Cruiserweight Champion of the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. But we had to ringside first to kick things off with our opening contest of the evening. And what a night which features many levels of talent in the MPWF. The future, the, the past, and we're kicking things right off with the tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Yamamoto Rishino, second generation superstar. The son of the legendary Yamasaki Yoshino. We haven't seen Yamamoto since WWF New Blood Rising representing the world wrestling future. Yamamoto Yoshino lost the title to t -Dot. He will be meeting t -Dot at the World Wrestling Future's biggest event. It's next episode, episode 10 for the title. But first he must compete here at the Cruiserweight Classic. Look at the arena. What a show this is going to be. Everybody is psyched. I, I mean, we've been waiting for this event, waiting for this finale for so long. And to get to see the stars of the Cruiser Dick Weight Division show what they can do. And here comes the legend. The insane luchador. Super crazy. Super crazy has been a revelation in the Major Pain Wrestling Federation when he took part in the Cruiserweight Classic. Now Super Crazy spends his time training with World Wrestling Future Young Lion Pablo. Pablo is backstage watching this matchup, watching his mentor here. This is going to be a hell of a test for both men. Super Crazy wants to prove that he still has what it takes to be successful in the ring. And Yamamoto Yoshido is completely on the bounce here, looking for a victory off the new Blood Rising. Once again, want to thank everybody for tuning into the Cruiserweight Classic. Thank you for watching the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. We are oh so close to 100 subscribers in our rebirth from the old MPWF page here. Remember to tell everybody to like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter at MPWF 2013 to comment in the comment section. Folks, let's go. Opening match and both men in the classic way to start a wrestling matchup with the tie-up. Super Crazy going to work the headlock here. And you know, this is a celebration of the Cruiserweight style. A celebration of all competitors under the 205 pound weight limit that we're getting to see here in the MPWF. Super Crazy is not going to be pressed by Yamamoto Yoshino's mind games. Yamamoto Yoshino is definitely wise beyond his years. Still a very young competitor. Already been very successful. But the Cruiserweight Classic wasn't the greatest tournament for Yamamoto Yoshino. You know, he faced the man who will be in the finals of the ladder matchup later tonight, the Cypher, in his very first match, which he came up short against. Oh, nice move there by Super Crazy. You know, his T-Dot, the man who took the title off of him, uh, distracted him from defeating Marcus Eagle, which eliminated him from the Cruiserweight Classic. So Yoshino has kind of been on a bounce. Like, Yoshino won the title. Um, wait a second, his Yoshino has got Super Crazy up. And that's an oh, front face suplex there. Yoshida won the, the World Wrestling Future title at our WWF 
thick preview uh, respect. And since then, it's been kind of a struggle for him. So we said that this matchup here is a way for him to get back on the right foot and get back into the position he wants to be in. And Yoshino now, oh, what a drop kick there, the super crazy. You can feel the energy here in Las Vegas. Here in the MGM. And Yoshino telling super crazy, let's go. Yoshino having to separate here. Give himself some breathing room. And again, like, super crazy. A guy who's used to being go, 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 go. Has to change his style, especially against young competitors. But look at that. Yoshino saw it coming. What athleticism there by Yamamoto Yoshino. And that's what we're talking about. That's what's going to be difficult for Super Crazy to combat against. And oh, what a kick to the leg there. And now Super Crazy's got him up. But nice. Oh, beautiful. Blue Thunder Bomb there by Super Crazy. And Crazy right now to a chin lock. Going to wrench back here and is going to ground Yamamoto Yoshino. Super Crazy needs to change this quick pace that's being in this matchup. We look there. Yoshino went for a kick and Super Crazy back to the leg again. Quite a psychological affair we're seeing in this first matchup here tonight. Okay, Super Crazy just booting Yoshino in the face. And now right to the leg there. And we're Super Crazy say enough of this Enough of the speed that Yoshino is bringing in this matchup. I gotta ground this man. And now, oh, wow. Another drop kick to the knee there by Super Crazy. And now Crazy got Yoshino up here. How, oh, no, gory special. And a gory bomb by Super Crazy. Nice move there. And hooking the leg here. One, two. And Yoshino getting the shoulder up. You know, it's gonna take a little bit more than that to beat Yamamoto Yoshino. But Super Crazy, feeling it here. And stomp there to Yoshino and another one. And again, it's just incredible, the, the, the psychology of Super Crazy. Just the, the mental capacity is the whole match has changed since he slowed the pace down. And now Yoshino having to fight back. But now Crazy blocking it. And Crazy might right, go right back to that leg once again. Oh, look at this here. Oh, I thought Yoshino had it, but a reversal there by Super Crazy. Showing Yoshino this old dog still has new tricks. Super Crazy down on the top rope. Gonna go for his boot, son. Oh, no. Yoshino saw it coming and moved out the way. And, oh, backstabber by Yamamoto Yoshino to Super Crazy. Now Yoshino hooking a leg here. One, two. This could be it. Super Crazy just getting the shoulder up. And Yoshino arguing with the official. That was a backstabber. Maybe one of the first times I've seen Yoshino use that. And now Yoshino's got him up here. And going for it. Oh, man. A very, very high angle back suplex to Super Crazy. Oh. And now Yoshino stomping away at Super Crazy. And I'm going to go off to Super Crazy's arm here. Oh, man. Saying you want to take my leg, I'll take your arm. But no way, Super Crazy with a nip up, but Crazy! Fight it back here in another clothesline. And now Super Crazy ducking that shot here. And I'll tilt him with a backbreaker. Super Crazy ain't out of this matchup just yet. And now, oh, nice takedown there by Super Crazy. A lucha variation there. And Super Crazy now on the second rope. And now, oh, there's a body splash putting all of his weight on Yamamoto Yoshino. Oh, right back to that leg one more time. What a nasty landing for Yamamoto Yoshino. And now Super Crazy picking Yoshino back up here. Perhaps a power bomb. No, no, no. He's going to go for a good bust. Oh, he hits it. On Yoshino. This could be it. Two. It's over. No, Yamamoto Yoshino gets a shoulder up at the last second. And Vegas is rallying behind the youngster. And now Crazy whipping Yoshino into the buckle now. But oh, Yoshino blocking that shot there with the elbow. Yoshino kicked to the, sorry, punch in the face. And now he's got him up and, oh man. Turning Super Crazy inside out. And now Super Crazy could be in trouble. Yoshino may be looking for a spin kick. And, oh, there it is. 
Yamamoto Yoshino with his spin kick, which I'm being told in my headset is called Dragon's Rage. And he just nailed him with it. And Yoshino knows that he is knocked out. And now going for the cover. One, two, three. Yamamoto Yoshino with a huge win here tonight. What a matchup and what a way to kick off the Cruiserweight Classic. You know, Super Crazy is still incredible at his age. Still incredible with what he can do in the ring. Look at that moonsault there. But Yamamoto Yoshino is on another level right now. And he is getting ready for that World Wrestling Future title matchup with T-Dot on episode 10 of the World Wrestling Future. That was exactly what Yamamoto Yoshino needed, folks, was a victory like that. That is how you build back up, you know, energy. That's how you build back up confidence. By pulling out an emphatic victory, the Dragon's Rage on Super Crazy. I'm excited, folks. What a night this is going to be here. The Cruiserweight Classic. Oh, wait a minute. Harry Prince now with Yoshino. That's right. We haven't heard anything from Yamamoto Yoshino since New Blood Rising. Is he ready for the title match? Yoshino says he has not spoken because he's preparing for his title match with T-Dot. He must not lose again. He's been training with his father, Yamasaki Yoshino, at the WWF Dojo. And tonight measured his abilities. He says that tonight he defeated the legend Super Crazy... And on WWF episode 10, he will win back the title and will end the Destroyer in the World Wrestling Future. I gotta believe Yoshino may be ready for that on episode 10. My goodness, the, the action never stops here in the MPWF, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but look at what is going to take place next here at the Cruiserweight Classic. Hector Rodriguez and the MPWF World Champion of Zero Angel Ramirez Ortiz will go one-on-one -on -one with CJ Parker and Chris Champ in tag team competition up next here tonight, folks. Well, you talk about a no good bastard, you got one right here. The legit CJ Parker, the former MPWF World Champion. Blame Chase Stevens for losing that opportunity at SummerSlam. They got into a scrap on episode 13 of the Major Pain Wrestling Federation and CJ Parker speared his former best friend for a breaker box, electrocuting him. Chase Stevens is in intensive care, recovering from that injury. Second degree burn suffered for Chase Stevens and CJ Parker has shown no remorse, no care, no worry about it. The only thing that CJ Parker is concerned with is the MPWF World Championship, which he will compete for on episode 14 of the MPWF in an Iron Man match with Sub-Zero Angel Ramirez Ortiz. This crowd in Vegas does not like CJ Parker and honestly, I don't think that's going to change much more by the time this match is done and over with. Yeah. The big question is folks, are we going to be looking at a two-time MPWF World Champion this season in CJ Parker from episode 14. And here comes his partner, part of Richard Hawkins' clientele, Chris Champ, 
the former United States champion. It was a bad night at SummerSlam for Richard Hawkins and Co. Chris Chap lost the United States title to Max Payne. Chris Chap has been trying to find a way to get back to the championship, but Richard Hawkins' bold face told him that the main focus right now is getting the world title on CJ Parker, which obviously Chris Chap was not happy about. It's got to be damage control. Richard Hawkins coming out with Chris Chap, trying to show solidarity here still. But Chris Chap can clearly see the writing on the wall in terms of who is going to be the main client of Richard Hawkins. And you know, Chris Chap's going to be taking this matchup. I'm going to want to be the one to get a victory here to prove to Richard Hawkins that he is still worthwhile. And he is, he is the future of the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. The longest reigning world wrestling feature of all, champion of all time. The man who held the United States Championship for over eight months in the MPWF. Chris Chap went toe to toe with Major Ortiz for the MPWF title. Bad blood. You know, this is a bad tag team right here between these two men. Now listen to that ovation. It's time for Sub Zero. There he is, folks, in his first match back after SummerSlam, after winning back the MPWF World Championship. Sub Zero, Angel, Ramirez, Ortiz. One of the most intense, one of the toughest. You've heard me say it before the baddest man in the Major Pain Wrestling Federation, the world champion. Angel Ortiz has lost one match in his career, one match in this season of the MPWF, and that was to CJ Parker, and that was at the hands of Richard Hawkins. He will go one-on-one -on -one with CJ Parker in a 30-minute Iron Man match on episode 14. But before we go to that war, we have this tag team match up here tonight at the Cruiserweight Classic. talk about a person CJ Parker thinks he was screwed Hector Rodriguez has been screwed left right and center by Richard Hawkins and I've just been told in my headset to announce here folks and I'm sorry I'm being screamed at by Brian Adams right now in my headset it's gonna be Hector Rodriguez versus Richard Hawkins at MPWF Revenge our next click review by order of the new booker of the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. I say this with gritted teeth, you know exactly how I feel about Brian Adams, but Hector Rodriguez will go one on one with Richard Hawkins to try and end this. Hawkins has done everything he can to cost Hector Rodriguez this season of the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. Richard Hawkins screwed Hector Rodriguez at WrestleMania at the United States title. He has prevented Rodriguez from winning the FWF World Championship. And now Rodriguez will get Richard Hawkins at MPWF Revenge. But you know, again, I, I, I've talked about how Rodriguez is a dark horse in all of this situation. If Rodriguez could be a man to get the pin for in this matchup here tonight, he could be next in line for the MPWF World Championship. So here we go, folks. Let's go. And Ortiz is always ready, ladies and gentlemen. Always ready. And oh, look at that there. CJ Parker tagging out immediately. He ain't got nowhere to run 
in the Ironman match, Parker. Nowhere to run whatsoever. So Chris Chap though, Chris Chap loves to fight, folks. You know, he messes with Richard Hawkins, but I mean, Chris Champ is a tough son of a gun. I mean, we go back to the main event of Bad Blood. I know that for some people, that's been their favorite main event of any MPWF clip review of this season. Oh! It was a hard-hitting affair, just like it is right now. Chris Chap now, got Ortiz, whipping him into the ropes. And now Ortiz though with a reversal. You know what's interesting in this matchup is that for Ortiz and Hector Rodriguez, it'd be a quick cut and they'd be a cruiserweight. Like two, three pounds would be under 205. And now look at the power though of Angel Ortiz knocking Chris Chaps outside the ring and now Ortiz going after CJ Parker. I was going to say CJ Parker currently weighs under 205. If CJ Parker wanted to, he could compete for the cruiserweight title. And now tagging in, head to Rodriguez. Rodriguez now on the top rope. There's no love lost for Rodriguez in any of the three men there. And oh my goodness! Rodriguez with a diving hurricane runner to Chris Chapman. Now Rodriguez going after CJ Parker. And Rodriguez gets a DDT. And Richard Hawkins is trying to get his men back in this matchup. But currently, they are getting whooped all over Las Vegas tonight. And Hawkins is trying to fire his men up. Say, let's go. What are you guys doing? And now Rodriguez, oh, what a right hand. That one dropping Chris Champ. And now Rodriguez whipping Champ off the ropes. Dropped down there by Rodriguez. Leapfrog, high leapfrog. That was, oh, what an elbow. And there, there's a, there is not a lot of love at all between these four people in this matchup. You know, the, the battles that Rodriguez and Chris Champ had for the United States Championship. You know, Rodriguez trying to win the MPWF title off of CJ Parker. You know, Ortiz and Chris Champ at Bad Blood. Ortiz and Parker right now. Like, there is so much history in this tag team matchup. Oh. Face first into the boot of CJ Parker. And now, oh man, double foot stomp. You know, CJ Parker's become an ass since he's been with Richard Hawkins, but he can go. One of the best talents we've ever seen in the MPWF, and we've known this for a long time. You remember back to seeing the World Wrestling Future in 2013, and one of the top guys in the World Wrestling Future back then was CJ Parker. And now he's on top of the MPWF. And now CJ Parker smacking Ortiz off the ropes, and listen to this place. But Rodriguez with a block kick, and now Rodriguez with a drop kick to CJ Parker. Now Rodriguez to the top rope, gonna dive for top, gonna go for the Mona Lisa, but CJ Parker saw it coming. And now Parker, oh, throwing him into the buckle now. Gonna keep Rodriguez away from Angel Ortiz. And now look at this here, double backdrop there. And now, oh man. Big time backbreaker. Richard Hawkins calmed down on the outside of the ring. Especially with that announcement that he'll be facing Rodriguez at MPWF Revenge. Richard Hawkins is happy to watch Chris Champ beat down on Rodriguez. And now look at that eye rake there by Chris Champ. Nothing pretty. No finesse. Just power. And there's a pile driver. Chris Champ would break someone's neck and laugh about it, folks. And laugh about it. And now, oh, suplex to the ring there. Chris Chap is in all kinds of control right now. But Rodriguez, though. Oh, look at this static seat fire. Nice move there, Rodriguez. Going for the cover wisely. Parker realized that could be an issue. It breaks it up. And now Rodriguez, German suplex in CJ Parker. Chris Chap now trying to get on the inside of the ring. But Rodriguez stops him. And Rodriguez now going for a DDT. But there's no Ortiz to make the cover to. So we make the tag two. He should cover Chris Champ here, but he doesn't. And now Rodriguez, Hurricane Rana taking it down. Picking Champ back up. Rodriguez, that, oh, nice reversal there. Arm drag takeover. Kick to the gut and a DDT. Snap DDT there by Chris Champ. And Chris Champ now with an elbow. And another one. Oh, 
What a right hand there by Chris Champ. Whipping Rodriguez back off the ropes again. And oh my goodness. What a knee. The Harley race variation. But whilst Chris Champ was swimming in his own adulation, the tag got brought in to the world champion. And oh, another one by Angel Ortiz. A kick there and now DDT. Ortiz now got Champ up. Got him up now. Go for the German suplexes here. And now listen to Las Vegas. They've seen suplexes in Fight Town in Vegas. And it's Suplex City time for Angel Ortiz. What an atmosphere here tonight for the Cruiserweight Classic at all. Accidentally knocking the referee over. But Ortiz doesn't care. Ortiz pounding away at Chris Champ. And Ortiz now going to look right in the face of Hawkins and CJ Parker. And all about to do something with the referees there. And now, oh, the kick to the face. Those two were about to do something. But the referee got up in time to see that. But two boots to the face. Or two feet to the face, I should say. Take it away. See, out of the way. What? And now CJ Parker with a cheap shot to Ortiz. And now Parker T-boning Ortiz on the floor. And Richard Hawkins, what's he doing? Richard Hawkins, let go. I'm about sick and tired of Richard Hawkins and his antics on the outside of the ring. Stop this matchup. It's other ones. And now Parker. Blocking the shot there. Ortiz is disoriented. And now Chris Champ with a knee to the back. And now Chris Champ. Oh man. A body splash. And this crowd does not like this team at all. And um, incoming CJ Parker. And of course CJ Parker now wants a piece of Angel Ortiz. Went for that kick. Went for the cover here. And Ortiz kicking out though. We heard it from the horse's mouth of CJ Parker. He wants success. He wants championships. And he believes by becoming legit CJ Parker, that's what will help him. And Ortiz tagging in Rodriguez. Being smart for the tag match. Bringing in the fresher man. Oh. You know. I mean, look at what he did to Chase Stevens. Again, if you haven't seen that, watch episode 13 after this show is done. And just see that madness that took place. Oh, what a kick there by Rodriguez. Obviously, right off the... Oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. I was tongue twisted. Okay. Rodriguez with his kick that sent CJ Parker to the outside of the ring. And then a record ball hurricane runner by Hector Rodriguez. What a matchup we're witnessing here at the Cruiserweight Classic. And this is awesome is right. Rodriguez throwing Parker back inside the ring. Gonna finish him off. Maybe the moon stomp. No, he goes for the elbow drop. Oh no, wait, go back to the top rope again. Rodriguez has no fear here. Formerly known as Kid Mysterio. And there's the Mona Lisa off the top rope. Hook at the leg. This could be it. CJ Parker down. Three, oh no. CJ Parker getting the shoulder up here. Very close for Hector Rodriguez. You know, we talked about how important every win, every pinfall in the MPWF matters. It doesn't matter who you're facing. If you continue to stack wins, you will get opportunities. You will get more money. You will get championships. And now they go for a power bomb here. And now, oh, they try to break his neck. They might have tried to break his neck with that power bomb. Hooking the leg here. Two. And throw. Oh. Chris Chat was getting in the ring there. I didn't think he... We, I mean, we didn't know if Parker was going to get the shoulder up there. That was close. And I was double leg takedown. And what on earth is Richard Hawkins doing? Richard Hawkins throwing in the chair and walking around like nothing happened. But Ortiz now with Parker. Sending Parker into the ropes. And now there's an elbow. And Ortiz in control. CJ Parker now trying to make the tag to Chris Champ. And he does. And in comes Chris Champ. And Chris Champ with a high knee. And our second one there. And oh my goodness. That was a lariat. Not a clothesline. A lariat by Chris Champ. Kick to the gut. Pop up. Power pop time. It could be it. Boom. And he hits the chat with it. Referee throwing down the chair. This could be it. One, 
Oh, Rodriguez breaking it up. And now Chris Champ. Oh, my goodness. Lord have mercy. An inverted DDT sending Rodriguez on top of Angel Ortiz. And Chris Champ now picking up Rodriguez. Oh, right hand. And another one. And now off the ropes here. No wait, reversal. And there is the face breaker by Chris Champ. And Chris Champ changing the momentum. Ortiz trying to fight back here though. Again, stomping away at Chris Champ. Ortiz now got Chris Champ here. Whipping me into the buckle. And oh, look at that. Oh, I don't think Ortiz saw that. A blind tag by CJ Parker. And Parker now, brain buster. A blind tag that Ortiz did not see by CJ Parker. And Parker now heading to the top rope. CJ Parker gonna go for the Swanton and he hits it. The Swanton bomb by but legit CJ Parker. And Chris Champ still out in the buckle. Parker now going for the cover. One, two, three. Oh my goodness. CJ Parker stealing the victory from Chris Champ. As CJ Parker has now beaten Angel Ortiz twice this season here in the MPWF. He has done something that nobody else has done. Folks, they are going to go to battle toward a 30-minute Iron Man match. On episode 14 of the MPWF, the Chris Chap looking at Parker. But Chris CJ Parker stole that victory here tonight, folks. An unfortunate end for Ortiz and, and Hector Rodriguez, but one hell of a matchup, ladies and gentlemen. We're backstage here with Cannonball and Mason Gray. I really hope that someone someday can put Mason Gray out for good, folks. Like, how could the board be happy about that? Openly talking about trying to screw Gen X and our title match that will take place later today. And Cannibal saying, with all due respect, they don't need the naturals. They've beaten Gen X before. And they won't fail Mason Gray. I mean, Jesus. Like, would you be more of a suck-up cannibal? But cannibal telling Mason Gray, look, man, we can beat Gen X by ourselves. So we may have a fair match tonight. Hopefully. Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not scheduled. Because... <laughs> For obvious reasons, Max Payne is not a cruiserweight. <laughs> the United States Champion of the Major Payne Wrestling Federation making his way to the ring here tonight and the question is why? This is the cruiserweight classic and uh, a Max Payne might be bigger than a super heavyweight folks so I am not sure what this is all about. Oh, man, what a tag match we just saw there folks. All four of those men absolutely killed it in that match. Max Payne calling for a microphone here. Let's hear from the United States Champion. I guarantee you there's a lot of cruiserweights here that want to fight. A lot of cruiserweights will have an opportunity at a championship tonight. So I think I know where Max Payne may be going with this.
And Max Payne calling out any cruiserweight in the back. Who wants to go? Who wants to try and win the United States Championship? I mean, honestly, who's brave enough to fight Max Payne? Who wants the shot at the big man? Oh my goodness, folks! Look at this! Listen to Las Vegas! Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen! Christian Paul is in the Major Payne Wrestling Federation and he has answered the challenge to Max Payne here tonight. You talk about a legendary cruiserweight in Paul Wrestling. Former DWF Intercontinental X Division Champion Christian Paul here in the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. What a moment here tonight at the Cruiserweight Classic and look at how fired up he is. We're going to see Christian Paul versus Max Payne right here, right now. This place is rocking. I cannot believe what we are witnessing here tonight. What an ovation for Christian Paul. And he is drinking in every bit of this moment with the MPWF crowd here before his United States title matchup. What a surprise. I mean, a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one, folks. My goodness. Christian Paul and Max Payne here tonight. I'm speechless. I am absolutely speechless. But they tell you anything can happen in the MPWF. Anything can happen in the MPWF. I mean, Max Payne was looking to face a cruise, but I don't know if he was expecting all of this here tonight. I know you're looking at this and saying, well, there's a huge size difference between the two. But Max Payne better not make any mistakes tonight against Christian Paul. I guarantee you that. So here we go. United States title on the line here. Christian Paul versus Max Payne. I can't believe it. Oh, Max Payne right off the bat. But now look. Oh. Going right at Christian, but now Christian fighting back. In. This is surreal, ladies and gentlemen. This is surreal. Oh, shot there by Max Payne. But Christian fighting back once again. Like, oh, man. It's going to be hard to take down Max Payne. Now whipping Christian into the buckle, but Christian removing out of the way. Christian's going to have to use that speed and evasiveness against a guy like Max Payne. It's going to take a whole lot of artillery to take down Max Payne and try and win that title. Look at that right there. The power of Max Payne. Ducking the lariat. Christian Paul now. Float over. And there's a net breaker. And yeah, quick cover on Max Payne and not even a one. I, mean, I guess you got to try, but it ain't going to be easy though. An elbow there by Christian Paul. Christian Paul now fighting back with Max Payne. blocking the shot. There's another elbow this time by Max Payne. And wow. Okay, now firing back, elbow on Christian Paul. Oh, right hand, sending him into the buckle. And honestly, the longer this one goes, the, the more it favors Max Payne in this situation. 
We've seen what kind of damage Max Payne can take. A look at this power. Oh my goodness. Wait, I mean, look, Christian Paul has beaten, you know, big names like Leonidas Gonzalez, who is huge as well. So Christian Paul, this is the first time he's on his first rodeo against a guy as big as Max Payne. Oh man, these are just vicious shots by Max Payne. And then, oh wait, Christian Paul though, reversing Max Payne's empty outside the ring. Christian Paul now on the top rope. And oh, there's an elbow to the outside of the ring. And now Christian Paul drop kicking, knocking Max Payne down. Christian Paul now throwing Max Payne in the ring. It's the only way he's going to win the title here. Can't win by count out, can't win boom by disqualification. Christian Paul now going to go high risk off the top rope. But oh, he gets it. Big time crossbody by Christian Paul. Go for the cover one. Two. And Max Payne gets the shoulder up. And now look at this. Christian Paul got him with that bow and arrow. And yeah, there's no way you're keeping Max Payne in that submission. You know, great idea against anybody else, but not against Max Payne. Look at this here. Max Payne got him up and oh man. Bad, bad landing there for Christian Paul. And now Max Payne. Oh, there's the elbow. And it's over, folks. There's the elbow by Max Payne to Christian Paul on a hell of an effort. And Max Payne now. Wait, Max Payne not going for a cover here. Max Payne going to send a message to Christian Paul, it seems here. And oh wait, Christian Paul reversing. And that might be a mistake there. That might be a big mistake by Max Payne. You don't want to mess with a guy like Christian Paul. A very savvy veteran at this point of his career, even with his age. You know, you don't want to leave Christian Paul to try and capitalize. Uh, Paul on the top rope. And now there's an elbow drop and he nails all of it on Max Payne. Hooking the leg here. One. Two. No, oh, Max Payne gets the shoulder up. But Christian Paul signaling for the end. Maybe he could go for that on Prettier. On Max Payne. Clothesline. Second clothesline to Max Payne. And Christian Paul ducking it. Got Max Payne. Oh my Jesus. He just tilted while back breaking. Max Payne. Christian Paul now. Going back to the top rope again. Christian Paul. Now off the top. Frog splash. Frog splash at Max Payne. Two. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you, um, we might need a replay on that one. We might need a replay on that one. And oh, wait. Block shot there by Max Payne. And now Max Payne whipping Christian Paul into the ropes. And oh, just knocking him over. And now Max Payne. Oh, man. What a body splash by Max Payne. And now he's going for the spear. He's going to finish this one right here and now. Max Payne going to spear. Christian. Oh no, Christian reverses it. DDT. DDT by Christian Paul. Go for the cover. Did he get it out of nowhere? Did he get it out of nowhere? Oh no, Max Payne gets the shoulder up. Very close, folks. Very close. Max Payne fighting back, though. Max Payne now. Oh, Chris, oh, Christian Paul fighting back. Max Payne now, and it's just a slugfest between these two men. And now, duck shot there. And now look at this. Oh my goodness, what a backdrop there by Max Payne. Christian Paul in trouble. There's a spine buster. And now, Max Payne going for the body splash for the second time. Look at the height. Oh man. Squashing down. Christian Paul going for the cover. And that's it. Man, what a match. They call him the murder man for a reason. What a matchup between these two. And a hell of a debut for Christian Paul in the MPWF. He came very close to beating Max Payne. But look at this here. 
the murder man, still the United States champion. I've said it before, who, who I dare you is going to take that title off of Max Payne. He is going to every show and challenging everybody to come and try and fight him, try and beat him. And none has been able to do that so far and I think that that is going to continue here. What a matchup, ladies and gentlemen. What a matchup. What a night. What an event. What an event. Right, we listen to this crowd here. Showing Christian Paul respect for his effort against Max Payne tonight. And you love to see it. We hope to see more of Christian Paul here in the Major Payne Wrestling Federation. Welcome back folks, the Cruiserweight Classic continues, we're about to kick things off here with our Battle Royal matchup to determine who will have a future shot at the Undisputed Cruiserweight Championship, and it's YOLO time, YOLO, pretty boy swag, my boy, my man, one half of milk chocolate. Great Boy Swag's been having an interesting time on MPWF Metal. He talks about how between Gregory and Isaac and Heath Slater and Pretty Boy Swag, they've been in trouble in being released in the MPWF, but Heath Slater picking up his first victory in the MPWF over Gregory. If Pretty Boy Swag can win this battle royal, this will all but save their jobs here in the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. The MPWF is always scouting talent, looking for new wrestlers, looking to make the MPWF as exciting as possible. And my boy PBS wants to make sure that he is on the right side of history here in the MPWF. Eight cruiserweights with a big opportunity and a huge one at that for this man here, Aaron Flyboy Fletcher. Announced on World Wrestling Future Episode 9, he will be taking part in the Elimination Chamber matchup at WWF War Games where he will be competing for the World Wrestling Future Championship. He got a win on the board against Young Lion Logan Moore. Aaron Fletcher here tonight could secure himself a cruiserweight title match and the Elimination Chamber spot at the same time. Big things could be coming for the Flyboy. I mean, the youngest competitor in this matchup, Aaron Fletcher has got to be feeling very, very happy and confident with himself for all the opportunities he's been earning recently. Here comes his tag partner. Listen to this. Philip Dallas. Not well loved at all <laughs> by the MPWF faithful, the World Wrestling Future faithful. I let him know that as well. 
He's got Aaron Fletcher, his friend, in a, situ in a bad situation on episode 10. Philip Dallas and Aaron Flyboy Fletcher will go compete in tag team action against the Blood Brothers, Kevin and Dylan Frost. And I feel very bad for them in that matchup. But Philip Dallas could secure himself a Cruiserweight title matchup. And, and he may be all happy to be competing against the Blood Brothers after that's done. And Las Vegas hates Philip Dallas. But here's a man they do love, ladies and gentlemen. Johnny Monday. He got to the semi-finals of both the losers and winners bracket of the Cruiserweight Classic. Johnny Monday has been ever impressive in this season of the MPWF. He's just come up short in, in almost every major endeavor he's done. And tonight in this Battle Royal, he looks to rectify that here by eliminating all these other men and getting a future opportunity at the Undisputed Cruiserweight title. Nobody who say they're a Charlie Jean fan, the champagne supernova of their world wrestling future. Charlie Jean had the most impressive showing from the WWF in the Cruiserweight Classic behind the cipher who was in the Undisputed Cruiserweight title matchup. Charlie Jean has had his problems with Wayne Level on episode 10. He will meet Wayne Level, but this time he will have the backing of Princess Supernova and Chucky as well. Charlie G would love to walk into that and the Elimination Chamber knowing he also has a Cruiserweight title match and he looks to do that here in this Battle Royal tonight. A very, very arrogant superstar but one of the most impressive we've seen in the World Wrestling future is Charlie G. What is this? Logan Wood getting ready for his the matchup here and Jason Holiday. Oh, Jason Holiday took a shot at Logan Moore. What is this? Jason Holiday attacking Young Lion Logan Moore. What on earth is going on here? And Jason Holiday now throwing Logan Moore into the production boxes. And now, oh man. I, I don't know what to say here, folks. Jason Holiday beating up Logan Moore. Logan Moore was about to make his entrance to compete in this Battle Royal match after a very impressive showing on World Wrestling Future Episode 9. And now Jason Holiday dragging Logan Moore to the gorilla position. And oh no, wait a minute. Jason Holiday's got Logan Moore up. And Jason Holiday. Oh, he just power bombed Logan Moore through the table. What the hell is that all about? What was... Uh, hang on a second, folks. I'm being told in my headset that Brian Adams is allowing Jason Holiday to take Logan Moore's position in this battle royal. Jason Holiday did a private weigh-in for Brian Adams, and Jason Holiday has dropped the weight. He is under 205, and he will be competing tonight for a future opportunity at the Cruiserweight title. This is absolutely outrageous. Egregious in every sense of the word. A huge opportunity for that young kid, Logan Moore, stolen by that man there, the biracial angel, Jason Holliday. And yeah, I gotta agree with Las Vegas in this situation. Look at the smug look on Jason Holiday's face. He's happy with himself. He's got himself into this Battle Royal matchup. 
gap believe like poor Logan Moore. He's being helped backstage from what I've been told. But thought he had an opportunity here and it's been taken from him by Jason Holiday. Yeah, I agree with Vegas. I agree with Vegas. And here comes a man who wasn't in the Cruiserweight Classic, but part of the Cruiserweight division. Savage Weight Shane Riley. We've seen the issues on MPWF Metal between him and Rhino Rick Jones that will result in a matchup between the two. The Bloodshed Fight School is imploded, but on episode 14 of Metal, it will be Shane Riley and Rhino Rick Jones. I mean, I don't know how Shane Riley is going to fare in an over the top battle royal situation, but he may make everybody tap out in this matchup willingly or not. A lot. Look at the focus. I'm Shane Riley for this match. Yeah, he is fired up for this chance tonight. There he is, the enigma, the eccentric one. Ladies and gentlemen, fabulous. This man went very far in the Cruiserweight Classic. An amazing competitor is fabulous. Absolutely in love with himself. Androgynous maybe. Incredible in the ring, yes. A huge opportunity tonight for Fabulous to get himself one, get himself a shot at the Cruiserweight Championship. But I'm going to quiet it down here. Fabulous loves to have everybody pay attention to him, loves all the spotlight to be on him as we get ready next for the Over the Top Battle Royal. go folks a hell of an entrance by fabulous but eight men one opportunity and this one is going to be very difficult to call ladies and gentlemen very difficult to call i think i think fabulous got eliminated already i, I completely missed that i went to check my notes and i think fabulous got taken out the ring i think we're down to seven men and we are fabulous, cannot believe it. I mean, after that incredible entrance, then to be eliminated just like that, we were not expecting that at all. As this, oh, Philip Dallas is in trouble. Johnny Monday and Pretty Boy Swag trying to eliminate him. Philip, oh, sorry, Charlie Jean, I meant. 
Philip Dallas getting beat down by Shane Riley right now. Like I said, it is going to be very difficult to call. We're going to have to wait until we get down to, you know, the final four for this to make a little bit more sense. You know, and I said, like, besides, obviously, besides Jason Holiday, I can't believe him, the way he got into this matchup, but... Between Jason Holiday and Shane Riley, everybody else competed in the Cruiserweight Classic in this very, very tough, but honestly one of the greatest tournaments we've ever seen in Major Pain Wrestling Federation history. A double elimination tournament with a loser's bracket and a winner's bracket. It put all these men through their paces. You know, the two men, Phoenix Oscura and the Cypher, who will be competing tonight for the title, absolutely deserve it with what they went through. Jason Holiday now. Going after Philip Dallas. Philip Dallas trying to hang on and he's being eliminated. So we're now down to six in this battle royal. Johnny Monday now going after Jason Holiday. You know, so far in this season in the MPWF, Jason Holiday, the only person in this matchup who has won championship gold. Sorry, actually, I take that back. Both Jason Holiday and Pretty Boy Swag were the hardcore champion. Actually, there's history there. Jason Holiday defeated Pretty Boy Swag for the hardcore title. Oh man, slam there by Shane Riley. Charlie Jean attacking Johnny Monday. So I'm watching this diligently, folks. Trying to call everything as best as I can in this situation. And now Jason Holiday trying to eliminate Pretty Boy Swag. But Pretty Boy Swag getting back in the ring. There's a back suplex there by Jason Holiday. Man is slowing down a little bit here. There's a lot, a lot of energy at the beginning of this match. Each man trying to slow the pace down a little bit. Alright, look at this. Shane Riley almost eliminated by Pretty Boy Swag, but Shane Riley hanging on. Aaron Fletcher now got Jason Holiday into the buckle. Now Aaron Fletcher trying to eliminate Jason Holiday, and this crowd will go ballistic if Jason Holiday could be eliminated. If he could get rid of the biracial age, and he does! Aaron Fletcher eliminated Jason Holiday, and listen to Las Vegas. We are now down to five men left in this match. Big elimination there for Aaron Flyboy Fletcher. And now Fletcher going after Johnny Money. Oh, Johnny Money could have been eliminated there. And another knee by Aaron Fletcher. And another one. And jo Johnny Money is trying to hang on. And oh, man, he fell inside the ring. No good for <laughs> Johnny Money. That could have been real bad for him. Now look at this. Pretty Boy Swag now working over Shane Riley. In the corner. Now look at this. Two men being dragged to the ropes at once. Johnny Monday and Charlie G. Oh man! What a super kick! What a super kick by Johnny Monday. Sending Aaron Fletcher to the outside of the ring. And he has been eliminated. Oh, an insecurity there by Pretty Boy Swag. And yeah, Johnny Monday. So Aaron Fletcher can't believe it. Unfortunate for him. But what a kick by Johnny Monday. And Aaron Fletcher just cannot seem to get the better of Johnny Monday in their many meetings with each other. Now, oh, oh! Shane Riley went for a clothesline and Johnny Monday pulling down the ropes and eliminating him. Johnny Monday is on a roll in this matchup, folks. We're now down to our final three. Johnny Monday, Pretty Boy Swag, and Charlie G. Johnny Monday just eliminated Charlie G. Johnny Monday is on fire, folks. We're down to our final two. Johnny Monday, Pretty Boy Swag. The last three eliminations have went to Johnny Monday in this match. And now Monday on the top rope here. Johnny Monday with a British fist off the top to Pretty Boy Swag, but it's not a pinfall submission match. It is about elimination. It is about throwing your man over the top rope. With both feet hitting the floor, Pretty Boy Swag now. Trying to fight back here. And a oh, net breaker there by Johnny Monday. Oh, 
Oh, what a spin kick there by Johnny Monday. Connected right in the jaw of Brick Boy Swag. And now Monday, oh man, wrenching that leg of Pretty Boy Swag. And you can feel the elimination coming soon. The momentum is definitely on the side of Johnny Monday in this situation. With those quick fire eliminations. And now Johnny Monday going to finish Pretty Boy Swag. Johnny Monday going for the close up. Pretty Boy Swag out. Oh, oh my goodness. YOLO. 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 You only live once, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty Boy Swag did it. Oh my goodness. Who would have guessed that? Who would have guessed that? My goodness, folks. He, he pulled it out. He pulled it out. Pretty Boy Swag now has an opportunity in the future for the undisputed Cruiserweight Championship. <laughs> nah, I, I am I am so proud of Pretty Boy Swag, folks. But we're backstage now with Gen X. This is the moment they've been waiting for. They earned this match a clash of champions. And, and Scorpion's in is saying they'll win this match for Joey Eagle and they'll win this match for every night that Scorpion is in the slept homeless trying to get to this opportunity, trying to get to the championship goal. Yeah, let's see them whoop Monster Mash and Gen X become the tag team champions. What a, so what a matchup, what a big, what a big fight feel we have for these tag team titles coming up next, ladies and gentlemen. Butterflies the size of eagles in the stomachs of Gen X. There is so much pressure, so much animosity for them going into this matchup. But this is exactly the moment they've been waiting for. Exactly the moment the fans of the MPWF have been waiting for. Was for Gen X to get their opportunity, get their shot at the tag team title. There is nothing more than what these two men in Vegas would want to see tonight. And that is Gen X leaving as the MPWF World Tag Team Champions. Like we said, you can feel the energy in the building. A big fight feel. This is title match. World titles are on the line, folks. Who is going to lead the Tag Team Champions? They won't get any kind of cheers tonight. Monster Mash, the World Tag Team Champions, won those belts from the Varsity Club at SummerSlam. They want to prove to Mason Gray, prove to everybody else that they are the best tag team in the MPWF. The only two-time tag team champions this season of the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. Cannonball and Oddball. Two big bad men and they're looking to finish Gen X off here tonight. You know, these teams are one apiece if you think about it. They defeated Gen X in tag team competition. Gen X beat them at Clash of Champions to earn a shot at the tag titles. And now here we go. 
who is going to lead the MPWF World Tag Team Champion. in the eyes of Scorpion Zinder and Marcus Eagle. Look at the look they just gave each other. They know how important this matchup is. You don't get, you don't get tag title shots randomly, folks. You got to earn it. And that's why the crowd hates Monster Mash because as much as Gen X earned the tag title match, Monster Mash didn't. They bullied their way into the tag team tiles to get them. This is very much a match about honor and respect. And here we go, folks. Who's the best tag team in the world? That's what this one's all about. Marcus Eagle is going to start things off here with Cannonball. You know, we got to set the stage here. What a, a hell of a couple months has been for Marcus Eagle dealing with a situation with his father, finding out he had a brother, you know, trying to figure out his own career, competing in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, did Gen X. You know, now finally here, with everything that he's had to deal with, he has to put that in the back burner and focus on the tag team titles. And he's lucky to have a friend like Scorpion Zinder with him a Scorpion Zinder has slept in his car, slept on park benches, done everything he could to make it to the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. And now he could be here tonight competing for championship gold to be a world champion of the tag team division. You know, Monster Mash, before we return to YouTube, they're the ones that ended na the natural disasters. They got rid of them. But they, they, they showed up as the tag team champions this season of the MPWF. But on the very first episode, they lost the tag titles to Ryan Sparks and Lethal Mathematics. It took them till SummerSlam to win the belts back, and they don't want a repeat of their first title matchup after winning the belts to lose them again. Nice snap suplex there by Scorpion Zinder. And Scorpion Zinder now attacking Cannonball. And the Monster Mash do the dirty work, do the bidding. And oh, wait a minute, look at how far Scorpion's in the travel for that crossbody. But they do the dirty work and the bidding of Mason Gray. You know, and it's, it's been a war between the Gray family and the Eagle family. And Monster Mash firmly in the camp of Mason Gray. And oh, shot there to the arm by Marcus Eagle and our German suplex. Trying to get that quick cover here on Oddball. Joey Eagle still recovering from SummerSlam, recovering from his son, Christopher Eagle, turning on him. And, you know, I mean, how proud as a father, you know, Joey Eagle. And obviously he, he would be if, if Marcus Eagle can win the tag titles tonight. But just to see his boy be in this situation to get to this point, it's going to make him a proud dad. I can tell you from experience, man. Anytime your kids do something to impress you folks, uh, you, you know, you, you're just beaming with pride. You can't believe what what you've you've managed to bring into the universe can can make you as happy as they can. And look at this here. They're not making Marcus Eagle happy. They're not making Vegas happy. But Monster Mash should control this tag title match. And oh man, a shot there by Cannonball, knocking over Scorpion Zinder. Now, oh, neck snap there by Cannonball. Go for the cover and kick out there by Marcus Eagle. Oh man, what a knee there by Cannonball. Monster Mash keeping Marcus Eagle in their corner of the ring. You know, some people may say it's boring, they may not like it, but that, ladies and gentlemen, that's Tag Team Wrestling 101. Why would you let your man get to the other half of the ring to make a tag to their partner you, you cut the ring in half you, you beat down the one man and then when his partner somehow manages to get back in all you have it becomes a handicap match 
Great psychology, but Marcus Eagle trying to fight back here. Nice combination of moves and lands right in front of Scorpion Zinder, and he makes the tag wisely. Like I said, you gotta take emotion out of it. You gotta really focus here. Scorpion Zinder off the top rope, Swan Tong bomb there by Scorpion Zinder. And Scorpion Zinder was watching Cannonball coming after him. Scorpion Zinder now has Cannonball up. Zinder backdrop on the apron. And Scorpion Zinder. I've, I've never, I have never seen Scorpion Zinder as intense as he is tonight. And oh no. Caught there by Oddball. And now here comes the power. And look at this here of Monster Mash. That's what Gen X are competing with tonight. Throwing Zinder. Oh look at that cheap shot there by Cannonball. And a tag. I don't think the referee is acknowledging that was a tag. Down there by Oddball. And again, it wasn't a tag because Cannonball didn't connect with the hands. They went for it, but you gotta be it's gotta be hand on hand, folks. And now Dragon Scorpions into the cannonball, perhaps gonna make the tag here. Cannonball in the ring now. Stomping away at Scorpion Zinder. Oh, there's a German suplex. And now Scorpion Zinder popping up from that German suplex. But no! Walking right into an overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Cannonball saying, no, sir. But Marcus Eagle making a tag, though. Sorry, Scorpion Zinder making a tag to Marcus Eagle. Now Marcus Eagle flying in with a clothesline. And there's another one. And oh, look at that arm drag there by Marcus Eagle. An eagle, baseball slide, nice hurricane runner there. The athleticism of this second generation competitor is incredible. And now Marcus Eagle going after Oddball now. Has Oddball up. Going for, oh, backdrop there on the apron. Marcus Eagle now trying to change the momentum to the side of Gen X. Marcus Eagle now, spinal tap off the top rope and he nails it. Gets all of it. Hook in the leg, go for the cover one. Two new champions at the home. Oh, man. At the very last second, Cannonball able to get the shoulder up. And now Eagle has Cannonball on the ropes. And now Marcus Eagle clothesline and Cannonball. Cannonball falling all the way to the outside the ring. Marcus Eagle going to go high risk here. Spaceman Puncher by Marcus Eagle. They are putting everything on the line tonight. To, be, to leave here as the World Tag Team Champion. Eagle now throwing Cannonball back inside the ring. Gonna look to finish this one. Marcus Eagle calling for it. Marcus Eagle now gonna go for a springboard perhaps. Springboard! Oh my goodness, springboard blockbuster by Marcus Eagle. Hooking the leg here. Both men getting in now and Oddball getting there first. And Scorpion's in and now going after Oddball. And things may be breaking down in this tag team title match. These two teams don't like each other very much. Marcus Eagle with a frog splash. Oh, he doesn't get it. Too much time there. And now look at this wisely, though. Cannonball stopping Scorpion Zimba. So if Marcus Eagle is able to escape, he cannot make a tag. And there's a German suplex. Cannonball got Zinder up again. And now Whip here. Send him into the buckle. Oh wait, Scorpion's gonna fight it back out though. And Cannonball's by himself. There's no oddball right now. Now Marcus whipping him into the ropes. Oh, the drop kick there. Beautiful drop kick by Marcus Eagle. Yeah, you really, you really can't call it. Who is gonna leave tonight? As the tag champs. Punch there by Cannonball. Cannonball now. Oh, close on. Now sending Marcus Eagle to the outside of the ring. Cannonball now. Gonna perhaps use for that environment damage. Cannonball got Marcus Eagle here. What's Cannonball going for? Cannonball. Oh, man! Cannonball spearing Marcus Eagle through the barricade. And Vegas ain't happy about that.
They're going to try and injure Gen X in any way they can. Now tagging in our ball. And now they're just drinking it in. Going to let this count happen. Marcus Eagle is out cold. Scorpion's going to try to will him back here. Marcus Eagle going through the barricade. This may be too much here, folks, for him. Now, Oddball got him up. And this could be academic here after that. Not oh, power center. And Oddball, all kinds of fired up. Marcus Eagle trying to crawl his way to Scorpion Zinder. Oddball realizes, but Zinder gets the tag. Zinder gets the tag, and there's a calf kick. And now Zinder, drop kick. Scorpion Zinder, fired up. Spin it around, power bomb. No, pop, pinfall. Two, he got it. Oh no. Close, close. Scorpion did it now. Has him up. Oh, blue thought the bomb. Blue thought the bomb. One, two, three. Oh, not again. It's close. It's nail biting. Scorpion's gonna do everything he can here. Shot there to our ball. Oh. Reverse there by our ball. Our ball now on a knee lift. And now our ball throwing Scorpions in there in to Cannonball. And oh, wait a minute. Oh, what a right hand here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know what might be happening here. This could be bad for Scorpions in. Oh, no. Our ball. Suplexing Scorpion Zinder to the outside of the ring. And we said it was academic before, but it might be scholarly, ladies and gentlemen. Scorpion Zinder is finished. Monster Mash may have done all they needed to do to leave tonight with those belts. Scorpion Zinna can barely move, ladies and gentlemen. He can barely move. And Cannonball just getting in the face of this crowd. My God, folks. But oh wait, Scorpion Zinna with reversal. Scorpion Zinna, look at this. Trying to drag, trying to put him in place. And Zinda throwing him out to the outside of the ring. And Scorpion Zinda. What is he going for? Here's Zinder! Oh my goodness! Zinder diving through the bottom rope and hitting a DDT. And this is awesome as right. And Scorpion Zinder now able to make the tag to Marcus Eagle. And that's the best thing for Gen X. That might have been the break that they needed. And oh my goodness! Marcus Eagle just threw his body with no withdrawal, withdrawal whatsoever. Are on Cannonball. And now Zinder picking him up because Marcus Eagle may have concussed himself with that. And Gen X working completely as a team, completely in synergy here. And now, wait a minute. Cannonball managed to push past Marcus Eagle and now tagging in Oddball. And in comes Oddball. And there's a close line, two of them. And now Oddball, no wait, reversal by Marcus Eagle. And Eagle got him up. Eagle. Ushikaroshi. The Ushikaroshi by Marcus Eagle. And Eagle whipping Oddball into the ropes. I know this time Eagle redirecting him into Scorpion Zinder. And now making the tag here. And now whip off the ropes here. What is this going for? JX Shadow Machine! Shadow Machine! Scorpion Zinder! Hook in the leg! Zinder! Catapult trying to get in! Try to put it Yes! Gen X have done it! Gen X have won the World Tag Team titles! Oh my goodness, folks! The elation! Everything that Gen X has been building towards!
Fox White Voice is almost gone, and we haven't even got to the main event yet, ladies and gentlemen. What a huge moment for Generation X. Everything that they have fought for has come true here tonight. Cannonball and Oddball were unable to get the job done. We have new MPWF World Tag Team Champions here at the Cruiserweight Classic. This is, this is huge, ladies and gentlemen. I have known Marcus Eagle since he was an infant. To see him get this opportunity is amazing. Scorpion Zinder has scratched and clawed in every independent in the world to get to this moment. And now finally, they have won championship ball here in the Major Pain Wrestling Federation. Congratulations to Gen X. What a moment for them, ladies and gentlemen, but it's the big one, folks. It's the main event, the finals of the Cruiserweight Classic. The Undisputed Cruiserweight title will be defended in a ladder match. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cypher versus Phoenix Oscuro. Gentlemen, that was a video on the cypher. The man making his way to the ring right now, folks. There he is. The only World Wrestling Future Superstar still in this tournament. The Enigma. No finesse at all. It's, it's actually it's so amazing that the Cruiserweight Championship is usually a finesse title and yet this man here has made it to the finals of this tournament with the absolute backing of the MPWF fan base the cypher says he will be the man that pulls the sword from the stone and wins the undisputed cruiserweight title tonight he gonna have to pull that belt from the rung this, this mashup does not favor the cypher at all but he won't put on you, ladies and gentlemen. Will this be the night that everybody recognizes that the Cypher is that guy here in the MPWF? But just like with the Cypher, we're going to go see next 
They video package on his opponent, Phoenix Oscuro. Interesting. This is interesting. The folks in Vegas have chosen to boo Phoenix Oscuro. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the Dark Phoenix, Phoenix Oscuro. And honestly, I don't think he cares that the fans are choosing to boo him tonight. The only thing that he's focused on is what he debuted here for, folks. Phoenix Oscuro has not lost a single match here in the Major Paint Wrestling Federation. He won the winner's bracket outright, beating superstar Greg David at SummerSlam. Hell, Phoenix Oscuro defeated the Cypher in the Cruiserweight Classic at Bad Blood. He has one more match to achieve his goal of becoming the Undisputed Cruiserweight Champion. All he has to do is climb that ladder, pull that belt down, and he has done it. Vegas is not catching a break at all, but look at that, the beautiful, undisputed Cruiserweight Championship belt, folks. Finally, it is here. Look at how fired up the Cypher is. Who is going to be the Cruiserweight Champion? Your main event, what an atmosphere Vegas has been. Both men now staring each other down. The Cypher and Phoenix Oscuro. Now the Cypher going after a ladder. Phoenix Oscuro pointing towards the Cypher. And now Phoenix Oscuro going for a ladder. Folks, this is intense. This is your main event. Both men now. Same thing on their mind. 
We've had one other ladder match this season here in the MPWF. It was a four-way ladder match at WrestleMania. And now here we go. And our Phoenix able to drop kick to the cypher. I have no idea what kind of craziness is going to take place in this match, folks. Oh, Cypher Sword coming, kicking Phoenix Oscuro in the head. The Cypher says he won't let any man beat him twice. And he ain't going to let Phoenix Oscuro beat him here tonight. Phoenix catching him. Oh, man, already on the ladder. Bad landing for the Cypher. So the, the goal, the object of a ladder match is to set that ladder up in the middle of the ring. Incapacitate your opponent and climb up that thing rung by damn rung. So until you can pull down the Cruiserweight Championship. Now, oh, what a kick there by Phoenix Oscuro. And yeah, he knew that was a good one. He knew that was a good kick. And now, oh, wait, block shot there. Cypher, though, with a kick to the gut. And oh, the Cypher close line of Phoenix Oscuro to the outside of the ring. And that may have given the Cypher the time he needs. The Cypher now. Oh, he's going to pull the belt down. He was uh, the Cypher. Again, never been a ladder match. Kind of trying to figure out what he needs to do here. Phoenix Oscuro. Oh. Phoenix now. Knocking the Cypher down as the Cypher's trying to hold on to the belt here. And now Phoenix. Oh, Cypher kicking Phoenix Oscuro off the ladder. But realizing that he might need to knock him down some more. And there's a shot there by Phoenix Oscuro. So it's very hard. Like, you, you, think you have to do significant damage enough to keep your opponent down so that you can go unmolested and climb up the top of the ladder and grab the belt a big time ddt that i don't want to forget about that is the cypher landed in the ladder against all of the old phoenix oscuro's offense has sent the cypher into a ladder and you know phoenix oscuro has competed in ladder matches in mexico before so he's you know he's not Completely unexperienced like the Cypher is. But the Cypher has him up. And that splash mountain bomb and he hits it. And moves like that is what's going to incapacitate Phoenix Oscuro. Now the Cypher grabbing the ladder. Now, oh the Cypher. Realizing what he had to do. Hitting Phoenix Oscuro in the face. I mean what a daunting task it is for the Cypher as well though. Not only has he not been in a ladder match before. But he's against the undefeated Phoenix Oscuro. There's so many plot lines going into this matchup. And again, you have to, just like Gen X did in the previous matchup, you know, you have to block that emotion out and, and your sole focus be on winning here. And I like, oh, Cypher is gonna pretty suplex it back into the ladder, but Phoenix stopped that from happening. And now Phoenix Oscuro thinking of something here, now calling for the Cypher to get up. Phoenix Oscuro, springboard drop kick to the Cypher. And now Phoenix Oscuro going to climb up the ladder and perhaps try and pull the briefcase to bring the belt down. Not the briefcase. Ain't no money in the bank here, folks. This is the Undisputed Cruiserweight title matchup. And now, wait a minute. The Cypher climbing to the top rope. Phoenix trying to get the belt down. The Cypher on the top rope. Oh, this could be bad here, folks. The Cypher drop kicking the ladder out the way. And now Phoenix hanging on. And oh, Cassio and Cypher power bombing Phoenix on the ladder. Oh man, a bad landing for Phoenix Oscuro. Like I said, so hard to keep momentum in a matchup like this. But the Cypher now picking Phoenix Oscuro up. Going to throw him to the outside of the ring, and he does. Now, Phoenix, sorry, it's the Cypher going after Phoenix. I may have just. Went back to the ladder, but maybe that's not sufficient enough damage to keep him down before you could climb back up there and go after the belt again. Oh. I mean, the Cypher ain't got no problem whipping anybody's ass, I'll tell you that right now. He has been in plenty of fights where he's gotten beat and done the beatings himself. As he's beaten down him, and listen to this, like, Vegas is 100% behind the Cypher in this match. Oh wait, the block shot there by Phoenix. Phoenix taking the Cypher down. And now the Cypher, oh, face first into the steel ring post. And now, wait a minute, 
Spanish fly on the floor. Oh, man. And the crowd knows that was bad for the cypher. And now Phoenix got off. There's a brain buster on the floor as well. My goodness. Phoenix ain't taking any chances at all. And now Phoenix setting up the ladder. Cypher crawling. Phoenix may be able to go and pull down the belt here. As he's got it now. And now Phoenix is trying to get the belt down. And this crowd here not happy to see that at all. The Cypher. Where is the Cypher? Phoenix is trying to fiddle to get that belt down right now. The Cypher there on the, the ropes. Coming back up now. And the Cypher from behind a Phoenix. It hits him. And there's another one. And now. Going to pull. Oh no Phoenix. Saw it coming. Elbowing the Cypher. And Phoenix is secure. Going back up to it again. And now Phoenix standing on top of the ladder. Now he's in no man's land. And oh no. Oh man. Oh man, this like this this match is shortens your career. All it does is shorten your career, folks. How do you withstand this kind of damage? You know, and then you just have to move on to the next thing here. And now the cipher has Phoenix up. Look at this. Oh man, a Samoan drop off the second rope, and the cipher may be on his way to winning the title. So what a main event this is for the Undisputed Cruiserweight Championship. There's a Superman punch by the Cypher. And now the Cypher with a ladder. Phoenix in trouble. And the Cypher going to climb back up again. And try and go after the belt. One more time here. Try and pull it down. The belt has been securely fastened, folks. It is not as simple as just going up there and just pulling it down with ease. It is to make it as difficult as possible for these competitors. And now Phoenix coming back up at all. Phoenix now punching away at the Cypher. And again. And again. And the Cypher is in trouble. Phoenix now has the Cypher up here. This could be bad. At oh my god. A swinging net breaker off the top of the ladder. And that may be it, ladies and gentlemen. That may be it. This crowd chanting, this is awesome. But how much more can these men take? And Phoenix actually picked up the Cypher. And the Cypher now having to roll to the outside of the ring to create some separation. The crowd absolutely loving this main event. But the Cypher... I don't think he knows where he is. And now Phoenix pulling out another ladder. Not like he needed it. I know. What, oh, this, oh, this is not good at all. <laughs> this ain't good at all. Phoenix Oscuro setting up the ladder there in the entranceway. He's trying to drag the Cypher. The Cypher is just dead weight at the moment. But oh wait, Cypher fired back though. Oh, knock it down, Phoenix Oscuro. And oh, wait a minute, the Cypher has picked up the steel steps here, folks. The Cypher saying to hell with these ladders. I'm going to pick up any weapon I can find and use it. Phoenix gingerly getting to his feet. Oh, man, the Cypher. Just nailing him in the face with the steel steps. And it won't lost to me that the Cypher just dropped them on top of Phoenix Oscuro as well. And now the Cypher grabbing a steel chair here. And I, oh my goodness! Just cracking him in the head with the chair. Now what's going on in the mind of the Cypher? He's going to definitely want to punish... Phoenix Oscuro for swinging net breaking him up the top of the ladder and the Cypher looks like he has a plan of some kind and oh my goodness the Cypher is waiting for Phoenix Oscuro to climb the ladder and meet him up there You know, I, I don't like this at all, folks. I don't like where this is going. 
at all. Oh man, right hand there by the Cypher. Phoenix now with a chop. And these men are trading on top of this ladder. This could be bad here, folks, for one of these two men. And oh, shot there by the Cypher. And now the Cypher got Phoenix to Oh no, don't do this. Don't do this. And oh my Jesus Christ. The Cypher just. No, 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 no. No. Look at this replay here. The Cypher just suplexed Phoenix Oscura off the ladder, onto the concrete floor, and both men combusted on the ladder. Oh my goodness. Take a look at this in a little slow mo replay of this. A nasty move there by the Cypher. Vegas is beside themselves, and both men are down. Both men are down. That was the damnedest superplex I've ever seen. I have never seen anything like that in the MPWF before. And now the Cypher. Gonna go up the ladder and win this match. But no, he's not going after the belt. Oh no, don't do that Cypher. I was telling you, you have to. You have to think about. You have to cut the emotion out of this. The Cypher not going for the belt. He's waiting for Phoenix Oscuro again here. And this is a mistake. This is a mistake and now. Oh, chop it. Oh, no. The Cypher may have just cost himself the Cruiserweight title there. And now Phoenix Oscuro. Oh, man. Diving double axe handle off the ladder on the Cypher. And listen to this place. They are loving this main event. And now Phoenix knocking down the Cypher. Oh, wait. Reversal. No, but Phoenix again in the Cypher down. And now this time knocking a ladder around. And another one. And now, oh, man, Sling Blade. What a war this is for the Cruiserweight Championship. And now Phoenix has the Cypher up. I'm going to give him that super Cypher trying to fight out of it, but no. All of this to become the first undisputed Cruiserweight Champion in MPWF history. Oh wait, the Cypher somehow fighting back. Somehow still in this matchup. Cypher now has Phoenix Oscuro up and suplex backbreaker. And now, whipping Phoenix into the buckle. Oh, this could be bad here for Phoenix. Oh, kick to the gut. Headbutt there. And now the Cypher. Getting mean with it. Getting nasty with it. Gonna finish Phoenix here, and there's a tick to the face. Folks, my voice is done. It's done. I won't be talking for the next couple of days, ladies and gentlemen. It's done. But it's all worth it for this main event for the Undisputed Cruiserweight Championship. And now the Cypher going to the top rope, maybe to whip out that 450 splash again. And now, oh, go for the knee drop, but Phoenix moved out of the way. Phoenix saw it coming. And now Phoenix gonna pick up the ladder. The Cypher still reeling. And Phoenix is Skira. Oh my goodness. And oh, drop it to the face. I don't know how much more these men can take. Phoenix now heading to the top rope. And oh, wait a minute. He's gonna go for it. Double rotation. Moonsault to the Cypher. Incredible. Incredible feat of athleticism that move is. And the Cypher is done. The Cypher is out, folks. But no! No! No, he's not! No, he's not! The Cypher's still in this matchup! The Cypher will not quit! And oh, man! I can't believe it. The Cypher now with a Superman punch. Phoenix Oscuro can't believe it. The Cypher said that this was his night and he will make it that way. And now the Cypher throwing Phoenix Oscuro back to the outside of the ring again. And now what's the Cypher going for here? Kick to the gut. Oh my goodness. The Cypher now going to go for a power bomb on the apron to Phoenix Oscuro. Oh my goodness. 
Let, let me tell you a fact here. Anytime the Cypher has hit that move on the apron, he hasn't lost the match. Venus Oscuro out on the floor. The Cypher now with a one-way ticket to the Cruiserweight Championship. And the Cypher is so hurt, so banged up, slowly climbing the ladder. Phoenix is trying to get up here. The Cypher now, trying to pull the belt down. The Cypher trying to win it, he has. Oh my Lord, folks, it is over. It is over. Look at this suplex here. Insane, insane. The undisputed Cruiserweight Champion has been crowned. The greatest tournament in MPWF history that we've seen ended tonight. In one of the best ladder matches we've seen in MPWF history. Both men put it all on the line, but that right there, the power bomb on the apron. And the Cypher has done it. And listen to Vegas, he does deserve it. Your new and first ever undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world, the Cypher. What a night. What an MPWF special. Now finally, the cruiserweight champion, the Cypher. Ladies and gentlemen, what an event. New cruiserweight champion, new tag team champions. Once again, congratulations to Gen X. Once again, congratulations to the Cypher. I'm gonna allow the Cypher to enjoy this moment. My name's Dwayne James, Johnny Feelgood, and I am signing out. I love you folks, good night. What a show.